told you, something must be wrong. <laughs> it's a great day. Okay, so, uh, I have no slides. I'm going slideless. Uh, this is, as you may have guessed, a uh, official release manager presentation. So, let's get started. Um, I'm going to actually talk about some applications and not just developer applications. Uh, these are applications that people might actually use, but probably not because they're kind of uh, frameworks. So the first one I'm going to talk about, as you saw in the schedule, is an XMPP, or Jabber framework, uh, or kind of a starter app, if you will. I call this S2 for Shotgun 2 because Shotgun was the original demo app, and I couldn't think of a better name. So anybody who wants to think of a good name, <laughs> later. Uh, so I'll just run this real quick. Uh, so here's a simple list view. Uh, you can clearly see I've got, I've got some contacts up here. So. You know, I can I can go and see Danny Loman and say, you know, hey buddy, nice laptop, because he's looking at his laptop now. He can see me and he's not going to respond, but that's fine. So this is this is uh, an interesting app I think because this is built to be completely extensible, and by that I mean this is built entirely with modules. The main application for this is. Uh, uh, here. So the main application for this is main.c, so 586 lines. All this does is track the state of your connection, the, trip, the state of all of your contacts and all of your uh, conversations, and then just loads modules to do everything. So you have a very small API here really to work with uh, that's defined in this header, and you also have the use of all of the uh, lib shotgun, which does all its MPP. Uh, this is pretty much the entire API that you need for a module. Okay. So it's very compact, and the rest of it, you can do anything you want. So here's a demo. Uh, this is the exact uh, chat module that I was using for the chat window. Uh, it's about 500 lines because it has tabs. If it didn't have tabs, it would be probably like 30 lines. So start it up, add some handlers. On the shutdown, you delete the handlers. Uh, it's, it's really simple. So here we go. We're, we've got a message going in here. and. Then uh, we just create a new pane if we don't have one. Uh, you can see here. Uh, so here is where we actually create the window. And this is entirely isolated. This is just a module. And you can change these. The idea is to make it so that these are going to be interchangeable at runtime. You can have different modules running for all of your accounts. Uh, and the modules can do anything. So as an example, one of the demo modules I have is a full dbus uh, module that uh, basically exports all of your connection info across dbus so you can just do anything you want. You can write a GTK client for it and it'll work just fine. Uh, that, that's, that's the idea behind this. So the idea uh, aside from that is we have a lot of people that are interested in getting into application development for EFL but it's kind of a daunting task to go start to finish full application uh, and, and add in all the functionality besides the UI. So this kind of removes that limitation. All you do, you write your UI and you're done. It's just simple handlers and I think that makes it a lot easier than, than uh, the other stuff involved in writing a chat client, like state tracking and whatnot. So I'm hoping that people are going to be interested in this and maybe we'll get some cool uh, chat client UIs uh, in the future. Um, so. That's demo number one, uh, goodbye Daniel Willen. Um, so, teamwork. I'm gonna briefly segue here uh, before I talk about my next application. So teamwork is a small module for E18 and beyond that I wrote over the summer. Uh, and it's for desktop integration with your compositor. So the way that teamwork works is it uses Dbus to anytime your application detects a link or a URI or something, it sends it to the compositor and then you can load the media directly. So here, this is terminology, and I mouse over a link, it shows it. I mouse over my uh, teamwork slides from Linux Con North America, and we can easily just do an entire presentation using nothing but the Enlightenment compositor and some image files. We can even do something like show a video of me with a much larger beard giving a presentation here last year. Uh, this is all really trivial, and it happens automatically. In addition, we can do cool stuff like fetch remote media here, as you can see with this link, and we can display that. And so this in, uh, in code is actually a very, very small, uh, let's see if I can... Okay, so this is all the code that's really required for doing the... Uh, 
So, all you do is you have a window ID, which also works in Wayland. You have a uh, URI and you have some cursor coordinates. You just fire up Dbus, you send it along, you're done. It's that simple uh, and you can get some neat uh, desktop integration. So, with that said, I'm going to fast forward here. We're going to the next application. This is supposed to be a 20 minute uh, presentation, but I have a lot more time, so I'm going to cover more ground. The next thing I'm going to show off, I wrote this earlier this year uh, on a request. This is ERSSD, or the Enlightened RSS daemon. Uh, this is actually a fully functional, 100% usable daemon, which you can add, remove, manage your uh, RSS feeds for, and then you can communicate with the daemon over Dbus, and you can write UIs using it. So this is actually a uh, utility library API, which allows you to access directly uh, for local connections the eat file where we store all the feed data. Uh, so I've provided this in the event that somebody decides to make local clients, though uh, I am planning to add some support for RPC so that you can do this over a network with a server. Uh, you can use this locally and you can access the eat file directly and it'll serialize the data for you and it'll return it in a nice format. So I've already got this running, and I'm going to fire this up. Okay, it didn't crash, that's a great thing. So here, uh, I've got a feed open. So this is the Enlightenment Git feed. So I'm going I'm to go ahead and I'm going to add another feed. Uh, so I'm going to go over here into the source where we have this extremely accessible feed data, and uh, I'm going to add a new feed here. So this just opens up a little thing, and we add it, and... Okay, it didn't work. So, <laughs> hold on, maybe if I refresh it, it'll work. Uh, it's a little bit finished. Okay, so it worked. So, uh, a little bug. This is just a bug in the UI, which uh, I wrote half of it last night because I realized we didn't actually have a viewer. So, uh, if you click on it, okay, that didn't even load. So, what if I click on this one? Okay, so we got, uh, this, this is, as I said, a very hastily created uh, UI for this. So, you can see here's all the uh, feed items for that feed. And it's all just managed in the, uh, the daemon itself. Uh, so hopefully we can get some neat uh, shared RSS uh, widgets for the desktop. We can get some applications uh, and, and we'll really get some RSS stuff going now that Google Reader is dead. Um, so, pause here. I've shown three things so far. Anybody have any questions? Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, I'm going to talk about EFX, which uh, I wrote last year and then didn't touch and then came back to and realized my past brilliance. Um, so <laughs> while I talk about this, uh, I'm going to run this uh, little script here, which is going to automate all the testing. So here's a uh, bump mapping thing, uh, and this, does, this is uh, just the demo. So we're bump mapping as we move here. Here's some elementary uh, integration where we've got some Allen widgets and we're animating around. And uh, you know we can click stuff and we'll add effects here. We can flip it. Uh, okay, so this is a fade effect. Uh, and so the cool thing about this is uh, this allows you all the times you want a predefined effect, and you don't care if it's customizable. Uh, you can do this very simply using EFX. So all EFX does is you use a function. So in this in this case. Uh, we're using a spin function here, we're using another spin function on the left, and we're using some movement functions. You define some uh, coordinates, say, or some other data, and then it will just run along the timer that you set. And it'll give you a callback when it's done, which makes automating all this stuff really, really trivial. Uh, so all of these tests are less than a couple of hundred lines of code at most. Most of it is just sequencing all of the, uh, the callbacks. Special thanks to Vincent Tori for fixing my circular movement out of the there. Um, so I'm going to let the rest of these tests run really quick. I guess I'll, I'll talk a little bit about them before I go into some quick overviews of API. Uh, so this is actually a demo of the panning thing. So we can keep objects constant uh, and, and create a sense of perspective as we move around. Um, this is kind of a neat one. So what it does here is it's actually using a map to rotate this, but then after the map, it's uh, using some calculations to actually position the object where it's ended up. And the reason that I wrote this initially was because I wanted to write a presentation app kind of like Prezi, mm -hmm. which uh, there were some people who really liked the idea of Prezi. Uh, so that was a quick demo of potentially doing a presentation using EFL. We don't have the presentation app yet. Maybe in the future we will. 
This is a demo of queuing. So this is the exact same thing. Uh, okay, this is a more complicated demo. Basically, you can set up a queue of effects, uh, and so you don't have to deal with callbacks. They'll just run in sequence automatically, <coughs> and uh, it's, it's a neat thing. And you can chain them together and tack on other things. Uh, so here we've got some, we've got a resize one, which allows you to also change the position as you resize. Uh, and again, these are all just one function each. You just call it, and it just goes, and you can change this, the speed and stuff on the fly. Uh, and it's kind of, you don't have to do any object management, it just works. So, we're finally back to the beginning here, so I'm going to save you from all of these demos. Uh, and, okay, so, all right, I, oh god, it's still going. How do I stop it? Okay, hopefully it stopped. Uh, so, here's a demo of queuing. So, here we create a canvas. Uh, oh my god, it's really still going. How do I stop it? Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to log out of that shell and stuff. So, uh, create a canvas and we create. Oh my god, it's really okay. So <laughs> this is a problem. Uh, okay, so. Uh, okay, oh my god. That was not supposed to happen. Anyway, uh, hopefully it's dead now. Okay, I think it's dead. So, create a canvas, create a rectangle, uh, and then this is the entire animation for the uh, complex Q1, which I will run again, hopefully, with more success. Uh, okay, so this one, we start up one rectangle, we start moving, and we do some rotating, uh, and that's it's a really simple effect, and all we're doing here is we set up some, uh, we set up a queue, we just chain on a whole bunch of effects, and then it'll just do the entire animation for you, and you're done. Uh, so, the reason that I'm bringing all of this up is because uh, I've come back to this recently uh, for a special E19 module. You may have noticed I am running E19. You get totally different desk flip animations, okay? And uh, kind of fakes out all the um, GDK window stuff and then lets us render to an Ibis canvas. Um, so we've got a basic demo. Uh, that's great and all, but what happens uh, if we don't want to actually show this in a separate canvas? Well, I've got you covered. Uh, we just go to the desktop thing here. We can create ourselves a desktop widget uh, or gadget, uh, whichever you prefer, which is actually the Windows desktop. And this is right on the desktop here. Uh, so it allows you, I mean, this is, this is totally a perfect concept. I just did this for fun, so it's not super configurable. But we just full screen this pretty easily in code. Uh, and, and then we have access to VMs. So in addition to you know the relative maybe uselessness of having this on your desktop. Uh, in the future, hopefully we'll be able to get some, some EFL uh, virtualized machine viewers um, and take us more into the server domain where some of the French people have already been taking us. <laughs> so, that said, I have one final demo. This time I'm serious, it's just one more. Uh, this is uh, a manual compositor that I wrote uh, to demonstrate to people what compositing is because that is pretty much the question that I get all of the time. What is compositing? How does it work? How does it you know, affect me? And that sort of thing. And I'm just going to tell you what compositing is using this. Uh, so this is a desktop from 10, 15 years ago on Linux. This is the window manager. So you click somewhere, you get a menu. You get a modern menu because this is a really modern window manager from several years ago. So we close the menu, we have some effects. Maybe we want some icons that we draw out here. Uh, okay, but we're from Windows, so we put them over there. Uh, so now we want a shelf. Oh, hold on. Um, okay, so we put that over there. Uh, so we want to open up the terminal over here. Um, and that's great, but our boss comes by, so we put up some work. Uh, we should put up some compositor code here. Um, so now uh, we go to our favorite website over here, and uh, we're showing that. And we decide, okay, so this, this uh, terminal over here is focused out, so maybe we want to see our desktop through it. So we try and add like a little bit of tr uh, transparency. Then we go too far. We realize no, we can no longer see that terminal. So that's a mistake. Uh, let's go back. Okay, so we're bringing that, okay, but that's taking way too long, so we just cancel the transparency all together. So we realize at this point that over here on this desktop, uh, we've got our favorite image editor open. So uh, we just go and we switch to that here. Uh, and we've got, you know, we're doing some photoshopping for our favorite company. Um, and, uh, you know, so then we decide, okay, we want to really, like, go over here 
and we want to just like zoom the hell out of this, right? You know, we want to inspect and make sure we're pixel perfect on attaching this crown to our favorite company because we're number one. So we're having a hard time zooming because we don't have an actual mouse in. Okay. We finally managed to zoom in with this wonderful trackpad. Uh, and, and so we can see that we've done, a, we've done an okay job in securing that crown. Um, nobody's going to be too mad at us there. Um, and that's, that's terrific. So <clears throat> then we decide, oh, what's on the first desktop? I totally forgot. Okay, so let's expose this because uh, we like OS X. So we're looking around and we're, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out what we're doing because we're really imaging the hell out of that. Um, so we're looking, okay, we're doing some code here. Uh, but oh, I want to see my shelf, so I'm going to go down here and I'm going to click on my shelf and bring that up. Uh, but, then, but then we say, oh, well, okay, we should get back to where the box is coming. Oh, we got some compositing issues here. So we, we got some spinning here, so let's try and stop this. Uh, okay, so we, we got that spinning. And then, uh, okay, that one's, that one's spinning. Uh, um, uh, hold on, I gotta, I gotta catch it. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay, before you know it, we're composite. So, thank you. Ha, 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 ha.